Hey everyone, so it's the uh, first day back at work for me, working on the frame after Christmas. I had about a week off, just getting some other little jobs done and enjoying um, Christmas with Dot. Uh, yeah, so in this video we're going to get another frame up and I'm going to focus on how to do a wind brace. Um, I'm going to go over how to do square wind braces and curved wind braces. So yeah, like these ones here. Uh, okay, let's uh, get in the workshop out of this sleety, snowy rain, whatever it is, and uh, do some work. Right, so I thought I'd just go over this, because when I first started um, trying to do a timber, timber framing, uh, I think it was the powerhouse was my first ever go at it for the hydro, um, I had a hard time figuring out how to do wind braces. I looked online, uh, YouTube, and I, you know, found I found out how to do it via doing that. But I didn't find really a very good method that worked for me. Um, so since this is how I do it now, I thought I'd just show it to you in its most basic form, and that's just with a square bit of wood, just using a little bit of wood as a as a demo, a little bit of scrap as a demo. This is square. So if you start with a piece of square wood, it's relatively easy, and I'll show you how I do it. So we want to start with a piece of wood that's long enough to include our tenons on the end of it, so whatever that length might be, depending on your project. It could be a metre long, or they could be tiny, you know, whatever they might be. And then we want to cut the ends to the angle that we want um, the shoulders or, uh, or the wind brace to be at. So it could be 45 and 45, or it could be... Um, you know, whatever whatever your angles you might want to be, you might want to offset it a little bit. Like, it, it really doesn't matter as long as those angles add up to 90, if it's, you know, bracing a 90 degree. Um, you know, whatever you might want to do, it wouldn't matter, you could offset it. Uh, but for this demonstration, we'll do 245 degrees. So let's just do those now. So I'd start by uh, marking those. So in this sense it's uh, 45 and 45 opposing each other. So I'm going to go and cut these two pieces off. Be back. Okay, so now we've cut off those two 45s. Now these ends, now here and here, this is the end of the tenon now. So now we want to mark 45 and 45 away from that to mark our shoulder. So whatever that might be, I don't know what it is, we'll, we'll just uh, make it look right. So, for sake of argument, let's say that much. And mark that, that's going to be our shoulder. I'll just do the same on the other side. Okay, and then we have two shoulders marked. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut along the shoulder. And just take this cheek off of the, of the tenor. So this type of um, brace I'm going to show you um, is the type I'm using for this frame and it's just where I have one shoulder on one side because the other side is mostly hidden. Um, so I'm just having the shoulder on the, on the inside so that there's no gap visible down the side of the mortise. If, uh, if both sides are visible you want to take a shoulder, have a shoulder on both sides of the tenon so it hides that mortise underneath it. And like I say, for, for my frame that I'm doing at the moment, that isn't actually important. Okay, so really now we have a brace. We have two shoulders that will sit against the post and we have two tenons. Now these tenons aren't going to go into a mortise or do anything really <clears throat> because the forces applied would end up being right on the end of these two points and that's no good. So now what we need to do is we need to take a 90 degree off the face of here down, can you see that? Down to there and that gives us our bearing part of the brace. So yeah. Be across there which is 90 degrees to this face and this is where the weight will bear down on so I just cut that off 
Okay, so now those two pieces are cut off. These are now, that is a wind brace. That is all you need to do to make a basic wind brace. Now, of course you could have, like I said uh, previously, you could have a shoulder here too, going down there, um, to hide both sides of the tenon, because this side's going to be showing in, in, in the mortise at the moment. But that's how I'm doing it on this frame, because it's much quicker, and the back side's not really seen very much. Um, so you could have a shoulder there, and then you could also have a shoulder coming in here as well, and in here as well, so that you hide even more of it. But again, not necessary for this. For me, that's just weakening the tenon even more. Um, obviously, it would be on both sides. So yeah, in its basic form, that is a wind brace. So if we now imagine that, let's say, uh, these are our two points that we want to brace. Let's imagine they're mortise and tenoned into each other. Um, and here's our wind brace. That would be mortised into there, and that would be mortised into there. If that makes sense. So on the back side it would look like that. And then obviously, just get them straight, we would mortise in here. Cut those pockets out of that piece of wood and then a forcing would be applied down to that flat spot in the bottom here and this flat spot on the end here so as these tried to move like this or like this this would resist that because those two flat spots would not allow it to go anywhere and that basically in its most basic form is a wind brace now often you'll see wind braces that are curved if you weren't worried too much about the structure and you knew it was completely overbuilt, you could just cut a curve into it. So you can just take this now, this square piece, and just cut a curve into it. Just go and cut that out. So yeah, there's a cut out. So now we have a curved wind brace. And if the structure was overbuilt, and um, you weren't too worried about structural integrity of the braces as in they were already five times the size they needed to be then that would be a perfectly fine way of making a wind brace but most curved wind braces wouldn't be made like that they would actually be made from a curved piece of wood and the reason being is now that we've cut that out we now have these weak points here the grain would likely be going in that direction in some way and in that direction in some way and it, this these two pieces here are liable to split off because we've cut a lot of this out. <clears throat> Ideally we'd, we would make this curved wind brace from an already curved piece of wood um, but that means that we can't use these edges to reference our angles and that causes us problems. So that is what I'm going to show how I do now. Okay but yeah that's basic form of it. It's very easy and it's not a daunting process at all to make these. Um, and if you want to make them square you can just follow that step by step and you can make square ones and in the next part of the video now we're gonna I'm gonna show you how I make curved ones and how I reference and get all those markings and angles okay. right so I'm just about to uh, cut the second piece of wood that's gonna be the big curly braces they're cut out of a rough sawn larch um, I'm cutting them like this so that it mostly follows the grain and we remove the sapwood and the little curves to them go nice in contrast with the, uh, the square wood I think morning everyone so uh, yesterday I showed an example of how to make a very simple basic wind brace when you're starting with something square and uh, you can just put 45s on it make the shoulders and then cut the 90s relative to the tenons um, and that is a very good viable way and I use that often but sometimes you have to start with a very curvy piece of wood like this that I cut out yesterday because uh, it you know, wasn't um, milled square, it was just slab cut. Um, so there's literally no square point on it anywhere unless you put one on it. And I actually wanted these curved. So, um, so 
I mean, how would we reference off of this? There's nothing. If we took a 45 off of that, it wouldn't be 45. We could find the angles with an angle finder and find an actual space and we could do it, but there's a better way because we actually have a reference point and it's the actual frame itself. Now, I've just temporarily pegged my position, my, my posts and mortise and tenons, just, very, just, just a few taps just to get them to squeeze up. And now everything is sitting where it's going to sit. So I can use that as a reference for these shoulders. So if I slide that up to where it's going to butt up, in there with a tiny bit of overhang so it's not a sharp point, and then bring this one down, same thing, like that. Ah, it's actually pointing out the wrong way, I think. And check what the other ones look like. Okay, yeah, so the other ones are the frame curve inward, so I did that because it gives you more space. In fact, actually, that is the reason for them to be curved in the first place, so that's right. I've been about a week off, so I can't remember everything, so there we go. So we actually just line that up on the frame, making sure the frame is exactly where we're going to have it. And if I was to say clamp this now to these, this is all as it's going to be, I can mark my shoulders off of the actual frame itself from underneath. Mark them across there. How do we get our other reference points, the stop and the stop? Well, it's quite easy. We can just, uh, let me move you and I'll show you what I do. So if we've got this fixed now, where, we, where we're gonna put it, we'll just sight down that ruler so that it's straight with the post. That is now the back of our tenon, okay? Mark that. Okay. Now we could go reference off that line, do a 90, but I'm going to do it by eye because um, it's not that difficult for me to do that. I'm actually I'm looking at this post here and the ruler sticking out, and it ends up yeah, that is about 90 there. Oh, the old ruler moving trick. There we go. So now if I cut those two pieces, those are going to be the ends of my tenon. Let's go and do that. Just uh, cut these out with a chainsaw, probably then tidy them up with a, with a plane. Okay, so now those are cut off, so basically what we're just doing is we're just imagining that this is inside our um, our post here. So actually I'm looking at it now, it's a bit bit big, I only want about that much stick out on the tenon. Uh, that would be right in the bottom of the, um, of the mortise, so I'm going to take a bit more off of that actually. That's a better size, let's just uh, position this. There. Okay. Right now I'm happy with the length and angle of them and everything. I'm just going to uh, square them up, tidy them up with the plane. This is the end of our tenon. And we want to use it as a reference. So here is our, this is where the other tenon is and I want this next one to butt up against it. That's where it's going to get its strength. Let's do that now, try and do it one-handed. I want to get that to line up with that line there. The other end is going to affect it as well. But essentially it wants to be about there. So when it's in the in the mortise it will butt up against the other tenon. We want to do down here we just want to have it at the bottom of a dead mortise. Okay, so there's our tenon imaginary tenon inside the post. So now we just need a shoulder. 
Right, so because this frame is currently facing me, this frame is going to stand up, uh, basically just up where I, towards, you know, the front. I'm, I'm facing, currently facing the front. I've walked through the door, this will stand up. Um, that means if I mark this shoulder now from under here, this will be the wrong way around because I'm um, uh, having only a shoulder on one side of the tenon, it would be a different way around to all the other ones. So I need to mark it from underneath. So now that it's clamped from underneath, this is the side that the shoulder will sit on. So now I can take this mark and this will create our shoulder. So just a really tight line across there. Now that that's where we cut the shoulder, um, the back of the pencil line. Right, so now I just mark out the tenon, the marking gauge. Right, I've set the depth of the saw. I'll just cut these shoulders. Right, now I'm just going to cut the bulk of the wood off these cheeks. The skill saw. There's a cut line. Just do the rest by hand. Just going to use a uh, shoulder plane now. So this is a uh, plane that the blade goes right up to the edges. Take some big heavy cuts off of it until we get down to our line. Close there. Then tidy up our shoulder. A little test fit on both sides. That shoulder looks pretty good. Could have a little touch off there. But other than that, that's looking pretty good. So there we go, clamped up tiny little gap here, tiny, won't necessarily be a tiny gap there once it's up here um, but I think once I take it off again I'll just take a shaving off here. On the other side, it's looking good too, butted up against this one so I can now mark from underneath, just need to tap it in there, just mark from underneath the, where the mortise goes. Right so all I'm doing now, now that I've got that one done it fits nice, is using that one to copy the next one, so I just lined it up, sighted down it, copy my lines over. They're opposing each other, so they have to be flipped face to face, so I get them the right way around. But yeah, that is my marks now, so just uh, basically copy that one, so they're both the same and the curves are both the same. Right, it's so the next morning, I never got around to uh, mortising those yesterday, got so many jobs are going on at the moment, things to do. Uh, we're back on it, so I've marked the tenons under here onto these beams. So when we take this apart and flip it over, I can transfer those marks to the face. And we can cut out the uh, mortises. While I've, because I've got to take it apart anyway, I'm gonna cut every other mortise I need to do. Um, I need to do a through mortise through here and on the other side, and one for the wind brace. I'm also gonna do that as well while well, I've taken it apart and that means that this is the last time I have to take it apart. That's good. Right, let's uh, take it apart and cut our mortises. Just a quick view of the two finished uh, braces. 
they look complicated making that, but it's really not difficult. It really isn't. Yeah, anyway, let's get those mortised in today. Right, so I've transferred those lines off the side. Here, don't know if you can see them or not, but yeah, over to the top. And then, using a marking gauge, scratching in that mortise. Now, obviously, because of the angles, it's very shallow on this, the mortise ends up being very long. Now, I definitely wouldn't want to just take all of that out square. It's just going to remove so much strength from the post. Even though it would be fine for this situation, I'm not going to do it. So I'm just going to take out the bit that is goes all the way to the bottom, which goes to about there. So all of that here, put an S on it. And then all of that is going to come out just straight down square. And then this I'm going to do at an angle to keep some of the strength. In the so for our draw peg, we want to go in the middle of this flat spot, really. Yeah, so we've got to go about there with it and draw a line across. And then we get a different square. So we draw a line down on each side. I draw from both sides, so I find I end up getting straighter pegs if I do it from both sides rather than trying to keep the drill straight all the way through. So now I've got that. Hang on. 35 millimeters down is the uh, point, the center point of my peg hole. Do we do that? Same on the other side. And get those drilled out before we do the mortise, because then it doesn't chip out the back of the mortise. So it's the next day and today the frame's going up so the wind braces all fit nicely I've marked the holes just got to drill those out um, obviously offset a little bit because we're draw pegging do that once to take it apart knowing that we'll go back together so yeah I'm going to take this all apart now and uh, go and lift it up right exactly the same method as we did before the draw pegging there's our tenon there's our mark we mark four mil over closer to the shoulder, and then when that go when that peg drives in, it's going to pull that shoulder tight, and that gives us all our strength.
problem, it won't go anywhere. But... safe last pegs in we're sorted okay well I hope you enjoyed that that's uh, frame number three up just one more frame to go I'm gonna take like a two week uh, break from this now because we're having this really exceptionally dry and lovely weather and it lends itself to outdoor work so I'm going to concentrate on doing the starting the sawmill project and fencing and then I'll come back to this once it's uh, a bit more rainy and because uh, it's a job I can do in the workshop in poor weather and the sawmill and the fencing is a is an outdoor job then I'm going to make the most of the dry weather so yeah I hope you enjoyed it and uh, thanks for watching